Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on Wi-Fi. Okay, so this video, I mainly want to concentrate okay, to let you to decide how you can actually choose in between Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7. Okay, currently, most of the organization, which I believe they are all at Wi-Fi 6. So basically, now they are actually facing this dilemma. Okay, whether they want to come on board on Wi-Fi 6E first, or maybe they can wait a little bit longer and then embark on to Wi-Fi 7. So this video, okay, I'm going to explain, I'm going to analyze the key difference between Wi-Fi 6E, okay, which is 802.11ax, versus Wi-Fi 7, 802.11be. Okay, so this will be the part 4 series discussion on Wi-Fi. So guys, if you're keen to know more about Wi-Fi, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on Wi-Fi. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. When more of you guys actually help by like this video, okay, this video will have a better chance to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me. Okay, by smashing the like button. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Last but not least, please remember to turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, let's quickly understand the various updates of this 802.11 standard. Before we come into this, Okay, let's understand okay, how does Wi-Fi actually look like for guys that in the IT world. Okay, for guys in the IT world, okay, Wi-Fi basically seems like a black magic. Okay, because clearly in the IT, they mainly focus on the network or maybe on the programming side. Okay, they don't really bother so much on the Wi-Fi. Okay, Wi-Fi in fact is considered as a wireless technology. It's not part of the IT. Although IT guys definitely use a lot of Wi-Fi, but for them, this Wi-Fi basically seems like a black magic. Everything will just work. Okay, they, they don't have much idea the key difference between Wi-Fi. Okay, the introduction of Wi-Fi 6 followed by Wi-Fi 6E and the rapid development of Wi-Fi 7 okay, within 24 months of each other is sure to confuse those who aren't well, versus in the art of wireless technology. In short, okay, typically for different era of Wi-Fi standard, okay, it probably will take a few years. Okay, but for this Wi-Fi 6 and then Wi-Fi 6E and then Wi-Fi 7, okay, you can imagine that within 24 months of each other, okay, they just surface up. Okay, so you can imagine that how fast this technology of Wi-Fi actually takes place. Okay, before we go into in-depth into Wi-Fi 7 discussion, okay, it is always key to take a step back and examine the path that leads us there. Okay, in the reality of Wi-Fi, okay, no event in 2021 even more thrilling than witness the opening of new spectrum. Okay, so basically for this Wi-Fi 6E, they actually open up a new spectrum. In short, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, the space is already very crowded. So in order to resolve the issue of crowded, the this Wi-Fi committee actually opened up this new spectrum, okay, which is at 6 gigahertz, okay, for the first time in over 20 years. Okay, to put it into perspective, 802.11 was introduced in 1997. Basically, they operate at the 2.4 ISM band. Okay, however, two years later, Okay, basically, this 802.11a actually emerged. The key idea they move is to increase the throughput. So instead of increasing the throughput, definitely the easiest way also increase the frequency band. When you actually increase your frequency band, your throughput also increase. So therefore, for this 802.11a standard, okay, basically they use this 5 gigahertz band okay, in order to improve the throughput. Okay, although numerous amendments, okay, basically they are concentrate mainly on how to increase the throughput. Okay, don't get me wrong, 
currently the Wi-Fi committee still emphasize how to increase the throughput, how to increase the number of user, how to reduce the latency. Okay, so these are all desire. And this is, as I mentioned earlier on, this Wi-Fi committee actually celebrate two significant innovation in rapid succession. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 okay, basically use this new method, which is called OFDMA. Okay, remember I told you that Wi-Fi 5 moved to Wi-Fi 6 so as to resolve the issue of network congestion. So basically, Wi-Fi 6 actually borrow the technology from 4G or LTE. Okay, basically, they make use of this OFDMA to resolve the network congestion. So basically, Wi-Fi 6 actually borrow this technology and incorporate into this Wi-Fi standard okay, in order to solve the issue when the network becomes congested. And shortly thereafter, okay, an entire new spectrum become available, which is the 6 gigahertz. Okay, so basically, Wi-Fi 6, basically, as I mentioned earlier on, they solve the issue of network congestion okay, by using this OFDMA method. Okay, so therefore, after that, okay, they want to further increase the throughput. So therefore, this Wi-Fi alliance actually agreed okay, to have another band to serve the Wi-Fi committee. Okay, the full impact of the 6 gigahertz band will vary. Actually, it actually depends on your location. Okay, for, for example, for me, currently, I'm in Singapore. Okay, so basically, I can only use a portion of this 6 gigahertz band. Okay, maybe just do a very quick discussion on this 6 giga band. Okay, so basically, we call it a lower 6 and a higher 6. Okay, so if you have the full band, that means that okay, basically, the lower and higher you can actually use to send the Wi-Fi standard. Okay, if not, for example, in Singapore, we just utilize the lower six band here. Okay, so this is what you mean. Okay, so whether you are able to use the full six gigahertz band, okay, so basically it's not on the bandwidth, but you can utilize this six gigahertz band actually depend where you are. Okay, however, regardless of the spectrum release in your area, okay, this is a very significant development. Okay, when they actually move to a new band, okay, which is at six gigahertz, okay, this is considered a game changer. Okay, so basically in the future, you can imagine that Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7, okay, you can have lots of those applications like AR, VR, etc. So basically all this utilize a lot of data. So basically with this Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7, these are all become realistic, possible. Okay, as Wi-Fi has surged in popularity and basically they have transformed something that nice to have to a must-have service. Okay, so now in my days, probably I will say that Wi-Fi connectivity will be nice to have. We don't really spend a lot of time online. Okay, but now they look at our young kids. Okay, basically Wi-Fi become a must-have service. Okay, uh, imagine this. Okay, if they forgotten to bring their phone, okay, they definitely will go back home to retrieve back the so-called their mobile phone. Okay, so basically why they want to retrieve the mobile phone is basically they want to be connected through through maybe through Wi-Fi. So basically, this is what you mean. Okay, so therefore for Wi-Fi, okay, the era changed from nice to have to a must-have service. In 2021, okay, the first hardware that's supporting all the three band, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz was released. Okay, so this is actually from the Wi-Fi 6E standard. Okay, Wi-Fi 6E, okay, you can actually choose one of the band, either 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, or 6 gigahertz. But for Wi-Fi 7, okay, you can actually simultaneously utilize this three band, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. So this is the key difference between Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 6E, you can choose one of the band. Okay, out of these three, choose one. But for Wi-Fi 7, it can actually simultaneously utilize this three band for the data transferring. So therefore, you can imagine that the data rate significantly increase. Okay, the additional spectrum okay, basically is a huge achievement. Okay, yet it didn't take very long for those Wi-Fi committee to look forward. Okay, the next question that come out is, what are the key changes that you guys anticipate for Wi-Fi 7? Okay, so basically put onto a thinking cap, okay, what you want for Wi-Fi 7? Okay, again, it will be the same issue. I want to have a high throughput, low latency, and maybe the cost of Wi-Fi can be further reduced. 
Okay, so basically these are all the expectation from Wi-Fi 7. Okay, the best approach to address this question is by examining the numerous difference between these two protocol, Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, basically this video, I'm going to discuss whether you want to choose to be at Wi-Fi 6E or maybe you can wait a little while longer and then embark on the Wi-Fi 7. Okay, the three most significant different okay, will be the theoretical maximum speed. Okay, so this will be the throughput or data rate. The better okay, this maximum speed, okay, the more data you can send. Okay, and then next will be the increased channel width and then the QAM. Okay, first, okay, let's consider the speed different. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 boasts a maximum speed of 9.6 gigabits per second. Okay, which honestly for me is considered very, very fast. Okay, imagine you download a movie. Okay, it can also happen in just a few seconds. Okay, so therefore for me, Wi-Fi 6 is already very, very fast. While Wi-Fi 7 is anticipated to achieve a maximum speed of 46 gigabits per second. Wow, this number is amazing. Okay, it's even less than a split second you can download the whole movie. Okay, so this 96, uh, sorry, this 46 gigabits per second, okay, for a single client, okay, basically the reaching speed is madness, is basically beyond the range of the speed meter. Okay, so basically this speed meter is to measure the throughput of your device, your network, etc. So basically even this number for the 6 gigabits per second cannot be measured. Okay, so you can see the impact or the anticipation of this Wi-Fi 7 to come on board into a home user. Okay, next, let's consider the increase in channel width. Okay, when people lack the necessary resource to complete certain tasks, okay, you often hear that oh, we don't have enough bandwidth to accomplish that. Okay, imagine this is uh, not really sidetracked with this Wi-Fi, but just imagine when we can't actually do certain tasks, we always say that we don't have bandwidth to do this. Okay, so basically this is actually so-called, they actually borrow directly from wireless technology. Okay, we now have this assess greater bandwidth for transferring more data. The maximum channel bandwidth in the 5 gigahertz was 160 megahertz. Okay, but with the introduction of the new spectrum in the 6 gigahertz, okay, the bandwidth actually increased to 320 megahertz. Okay, just to do a very quick comparison, the entire 2.4 gigahertz is only just 83 megahertz. Okay, so basically this actually made these changes very significant. With the introduction of 6 gigahertz band, okay, basically the channel bandwidth increased to 320 megahertz. And this made this change in terms of bandwidth significant. Okay, lastly, okay, we talk about the increase in QAM. Okay, basically this QAM is a technique okay, for encoding data on the radio signal. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 actually utilized 102 for QAM. Okay, which means that Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E, they will be using this 102 for QAM. And Wi-Fi 7, okay, uh, not really anticipate, they will definitely use this 4096 QAM. Okay, for example, if a TV can handle 4K resolution, Okay, why not Wi-Fi? Okay, nowadays TV are also called smart TV. Okay, so basically they can stream the data. So therefore, the Wi-Fi must be able to so-called support this 4K resolution. And therefore, Wi-Fi need to be stepped up. Okay, so therefore we have this Wi-Fi 7 coming on board in just a few more months. Okay, so this new QAM rate actually coupled with the 320 MHz wide channel Okay, enable achieving speed up to 46 gigabits per second. Okay, so basically in short, QAM together with the channel bandwidth okay, actually allow us to achieve this speed of 46 gigabits per second. Next, okay, we have talked a lot of, about the difference. Okay, let's quickly just talk about some similarity between Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7. Okay, basically, they both actually utilize the 6 gigahertz band. Okay, remember, okay, this is from Wi-Fi 6E onward. Okay, Wi-Fi 6E is basically the earliest standard that adopt the use of 6 gigahertz band. 
Okay, so basically they offer exceptional fast speed and feature wide bandwidth. Okay, additionally, neither has many client devices capable of fully utilize this advancement. So in short, okay, most of the device we will not be able to fully utilize the benefit of Wi-Fi 6E. Okay, so therefore, okay, a lot of people start to ask whether is it necessary to move to Wi-Fi 7. As I mentioned, I think that with Wi-Fi 6E, we probably will not fully utilize the resource of the bandwidth. So therefore, for Wi-Fi 7, a lot of questions ask, okay, whether is it, is it a good to go or whether is it a necessity to move to Wi-Fi 7. Okay, for the average network, okay, it is challenging to suppress the performance of a well-designed Wi-Fi 6 network equipped with quality hardware. Okay, so in short, Wi-Fi 6 okay, has been serving a lot of organization well. Okay, so therefore, the, this Wi-Fi 6 is very stable. Okay, why we want to upset them to Wi-Fi 6E or maybe Wi-Fi 7. Okay, so in Wi-Fi speed is often the primary factor that motivate people to adopt the newest technology. Okay, but definitely it comes with a cost. Definitely it's always desire okay, to come into this Wi-Fi standard that can give us the best possible throughput. Okay, however, as what you mentioned, it definitely will come with a cost. Okay, so this cost isn't just measured in dollar spent. It also includes the requirement needed to achieve that impressive speed of 46 gigabits per second. Okay, in short, okay, this 46 gigabits per second is so-called ideal. Okay, we are not probably even half of this speed. Normally, we don't even have so-called half of this 46 gigabits per second speed. So this gives you some idea okay, whether we will be able to fully utilize this 46 gigabits per second. Maybe not now, maybe in the near future when everything explodes, then we will be having some changes to meet full use of this 46 gigabits per second. At this moment, I will say that uh, it's almost overkill. Okay, unfortunately, only one person can answer the question, okay, whether you want to use 6E or Wi-Fi 7. Okay, do I buy Wi-Fi 6E or wait a little while longer okay, for Wi-Fi 7 to stable down? Okay, and then definitely I will not be the correct person to answer this question. Okay, so to achieve those crazy fast rate, okay, many things need to fall into places, okay, which I have mentioned earlier on. This 46 gigabits per second, to achieve this, Okay, a lot of things need to be aligned. Okay, in the real world, okay, this is not feasible. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, this 46 gigabits per second, even for Wi-Fi 6, 9.6 gigahertz, gigabits per second, okay, we, it's very rare that we can fully occupy this huge so-called data transfer speed. Okay, so guys, okay, please consider to like this video. And if you have learned something from this video, please remember to subscribe to this channel. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the decision, okay, whether to move to the latest and the greatest technology basically hinges on a single question. Okay, what is your organization goal? Okay, whether you want to straight away jump to 6E or maybe you want to wait a little while longer for Wi-Fi 7 to stable before you embark on the Wi-Fi 7. So before you, you decide, okay, you must understand what, is your organization goal. Okay, if you are someone who loves staying on the bleeding edge of technology okay, with no budget constraint, okay, I think this is almost not possible. Everyone definitely will have some, some form of budget constraint. Okay, with no, I think okay, it's a little bit difficult to imagine. Okay, then by all means, go ahead and upgrade to Wi-Fi 6E now. And then maybe for a few more months, okay, you can actually embrace Wi-Fi 7. Okay, for those that don't have any budget constraint, okay, like what you mentioned earlier on, okay, it suggests that you can actually come on board onto Wi-Fi 6E. Okay, so Wi-Fi 7 is new. Definitely, there will be a lot of issue to be resolved. Okay, so I think just another few more months, okay, I think Wi-Fi 7 will start to establish the stability. Okay, however, if you are among the vast majority okay, who try to optimize their IT budget, Okay, which means that we don't have a, a deep wallet, then ask yourself this question. Okay, where are you in your budget cycle? Okay, if this is the year to upgrade the Wi-Fi network and your organization enjoy being a technology leader, 
then Wi-Fi 6E is the answer. Okay, so basically, if let's say you do something that uh, you belong to a tech area, okay, so basically, if a client know that you actually fall on Wi-Fi 6, it's so-called it's still behind the time. Okay, so therefore, if you are the technology leader, then you actually can consider to switch to Wi-Fi 6E. Okay, so if you prefer a little bit more stability, okay, you can opt for the current Wi-Fi 6. As I shared with you earlier on, Wi-Fi 6, okay, in fact, is already very stable. So if you are someone that look for stable network, then maybe you can so-called stick on this Wi-Fi 6. Uh, don't really need to move to Wi-Fi 6E first or maybe even Wi-Fi 7. Okay, so just stick with Wi-Fi 6 technology. Okay, if your turn for budget allocation isn't for another couple of years, then wait for Wi-Fi 7. Okay, which means that you don't have a budget in these few years, then definitely it's a good choice to wait for Wi-Fi 7. By the time I think Wi-Fi 7 already very stable. Okay, so therefore, this is the key consideration here. While Wi-Fi 6E is, is still enhancing, okay, basically it will have a few bugs that need to be ironed out. Okay, the industry expect this growing pain to be felt with Wi-Fi 6E so that when Wi-Fi 7 is expected to hit the market in 2024, it will be primed and ready to go. Okay, so currently we are already at 2024. Okay, Wi-Fi 7 is going to happen. In fact, you can start to buy Wi-Fi 7 router now. Okay, but I will say this. Okay, I think a lot of so-called developer were going to do a firmware update through the air. Okay, so which means that they actually sell this router to you, but they probably have the intention to do a firmware upgrade so as to uh, so-called serve you better. Okay, so with this, I hope I have answered your question, whether you want to come on board onto Wi-Fi 6E, or maybe you can wait a few more months okay, before you actually can embark onto this Wi-Fi 7. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.